It's very early in the morning, but I can't stop studying and listening to some of these videos where Catholic bishops and professors and historians all claim to be philosophers. And that's an eye-opener to me because when I studied and researched on the Antonician Fathers of the second century and onwards, I found that they were involved with Greek philosophy. And that is why their doctrines and their traditions do not reflect the early church of the first century. Interesting. Uh, looking at the catechism of the Catholic Church, you know, I find uh, on page 31 where they say both scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal sentiments of devotion and reverence. Then on page 32, under the title, The Magisterium of the Church, it says, This means that the task of interpretation has been entrusted to the bishops in communion with the successor of Peter, the Bishop of Rome. So there's three types of authority that the Roman Catholic Church uh, states in the Catechism. But I find that there is a fourth one, a, a, a fourth stream of authority, and that is Greek philosophy. Because these Catholic uh, bishops, these Catholic professors, and on and on, they're all philosophers. You can look up on YouTube and you will find videos, for example, Dr. Robert Barron says that he's a philosopher. Well, it's my pleasure to address the Knights of Malta at your national gathering. You're a group that I've admired uh, over the years, so thank you for your invitation. You know, in recent weeks and months, as our country goes through this convulsive time, I can't tell you how many people have asked me, Bishop, what is going on? <laughs> what, how do you explain what's happening on our streets? What's happening with the rhetoric people are using? What's going on in our culture? Well, there have been all kinds of analyses, you know, political and economic and sociological. But, you know, by training and instinct, I'm a philosopher. And philosophers always ask the fundamental questions. I think to understand what's going on, we have to put on our philosopher's caps. And so what I want to do with you in the talk today is look at this question philosophically by stepping back a bit from it. I'm going to propose to you four thinkers, two Germans from the 19th century, two Frenchmen from the 20th century, who have been extraordinarily influential on the way we think and the way we act today. And I think understanding um, these philosophers will help us understand what's happening in our time. Now, the four I've got in mind. Bishop uh, Robert Barron. And when you look up Dr. Peter Kreeft, you find where he says that he loves Plato. And he talks about and he teaches philosophy at the universities. I fell in love with Plato. Yeah. Uh, read Aristotle was convinced that rationally and philosophically and logically Aristotle was right and Plato was wrong uh, was, yep. about yep. the forms yep. and about the soul and the body. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, okay, I have to choose between uh, beauty and fascination on the one hand and truth on the other. Truth trumps everything. Yes. I still love Plato and love yeah. to teach him much more than Aristotle. But, but, but Aristotle's then, right. But then I think sometimes people make a sharp distinguish, distinction between Plato and Aristotle that may not necessarily be so. I think right. there, do you think? M more than that, I would say that uh, Aristotle is 90% Plato. Oh, wow. A. E. Taylor, who wrote a very good book on Plato, also wrote a short run on Aristotle, proving uh, that Aristotle was basically a Platonist. Ooh, how did he do that? Where are the forms located? Well, uh, Aquinas synthesizes them by saying yeah. that the forms exist in three places. Uh, they exist in the mind of God, mm -hmm. in themselves, 
They exist in things in the as thing. the forms of yep. natural things, as Aristotle said, and they exist in the human mind as abstracted from things, as right. Aristotle also says. Right. So that's basically two thirds Aristotle and one third Plato. Yeah. But Plato's right about God, and Aristotle's right about us. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite philosopher other than Aquinas? Pascal. I love Pascal. Pascal. My students too. They are moved by Pascal. Talk about some of And. I even found a, a young girl who claims that she's young, but she's a motivator. Uh, it's called Lizzie's Answers. And she has a video where she says that Protestant philosopher majors are becoming Catholic. And of course, this is to be expected because if this Protestant uh, philosopher majors, or philosophy majors, they love philosophy, and when they study the Catholic Church, they find that the Catholic Church is also, they love philosophy also. There's a connection. So, in all of this, what I'm trying to say is that you can never reconcile the true Bible believers with the Roman Catholic Church and Catholics. Why? Because their sources of authority are several. Well, the source of authority for all Bible believers is the Word of God, and especially the words of Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus Christ said, we must follow. And because the Bible says that on Judgment Day, it is Jesus and the words that He taught that are going to judge us. And so there cannot be any connection between a Bible Christian and a Catholic because Catholics not only follow scripture but they follow traditions these are traditions that are not written down that supposedly were passed on by word of mouth by the Apostles but there's no no uh, writings that reflect that and uh, of course the Catholics also use the uh, Apocrypha and they use other books that came in circulation they were not written by the Apostles but then they claim that their another the strongest source is the magisterium of the church, and they said it is them and only them that can give you the right interpretation of scripture. But then we have Greek philosophy. If these men are influenced by Greek philosophy, then guess what? What they're going the way they're going to interpret the Bible is not going to be a sound biblical interpretation but it will have different uh, interpretations, different ideas, because they believe in Greek philosophy. And they, they, it is so permeated in the Catholic culture that there is no way that they can be Bible Christians. So I thought I'd share that with you because it's interesting to note how there's so many videos where Catholics profess to be philosophers and if they profess to be philosophers then they cannot be biblical Christians Paul and the Apostles opposed Greek philosophy and all other kinds of philosophy they opposed it because they trusted the words of Jesus Christ because Jesus said that his words were not from this earth they were from above and so if you whoever does the, the or believes and practices the doctrine of Christ, they will know if this doctrine is from heaven. Know this that Bible believing Christians are in a place of their own, and the the interpretation of the Bible is direct and it is wonderful because we stick to the words of Jesus. Well the Catholics because of all these things that they have, those extra things, Greek philosophy especially will give them a slant or a different interpretation, an allegorical interpretation of the scriptures where they can see two meanings to one verse. So just for you to know that this is what we're up against and that is why Catholics don't see eye to eye and they never will see eye to eye with Bible believing Christians. Pope Benedict's book, The Fathers, tells much. 
the fathers of the church exhorted believers in the face of persecution of fighting heresies and misunderstandings. They were theologians and philosophers. Page 20. Justin, he founded a school in Rome where, free of charge, he initiated students into the new religion, Catholic, considered as a true philosophy. This is why Greek philosophy cannot be opposed to gospel truth, and Christians can draw from it confidently as from a good of their own. Page 21. Sources of authority for Catholics, Scripture, Oral Tradition, the Magisterium, and Greek Philosophy. If the Magisterium of the Church has the task of interpretation entrusted to its bishops and they are philosophers, this is not Biblical Christianity, it never will be.